4.6 is on inequalities with triangles. And this is the last section in unit four, which means we are going to be taking this test right around the corner next week sometime, okay? The biggest idea that I can come across or try to deliver to you is this very first idea. And I wanna say over half the problems on the worksheet will deal with this concept. It's this. In a triangle, the largest angle lies opposite the largest side. Let me translate that for you. The biggest angle is going to be across from the biggest side. The smallest angle is going to be across from or opposite of the smallest side. And that should make sense to you. Moving on. Uh, that should make sense to you because if you think about an angle opening upward or becoming bigger, when this angle of this triangle becomes bigger, then that other side is going to end up getting longer. And I can't make this one bigger without making the other one smaller, by the way, when you think about making a triangle. So my big concept, the one that we do the most problems with, will be dealing with this idea. In triangles, the largest angle is across from or opposite the largest side, and the smallest angle lies opposite the smallest side. Let's do a problem with that. Here's number one. It's on your worksheet. You have that worksheet in front of you. It asks you to list the sides and angles from smallest to largest. Let's start with the angles. The smallest angle is this angle here and that is angle C. It's your smallest angle. Please use the angle symbol when you're using angle C. And since there's not multiple <laughs> angles with it, you can just write angle C for short. If there was another uh, thing here, you would need to say angle BCA or angle ACB. My next smallest angle or the middle angle, I guess you could say, angle A. And lastly, your largest angle would be Angle B. And now, the sides. The smallest side, if this is your smallest angle, the smallest side is going to be across from or opposite of, meaning this 51 touches this side and this side. Well, which one's opposite that? It's this side, and you would write it as a segment segment AB is your smallest side and then across from your middle angle is going to be your middle side which is segment BC now you could write it as segment BC or you can write it as segment CB they are the same angle it doesn't matter which uh, order you put those letters in and then the largest side is across from the largest angle, which is segment AC. Fairly simple concept, right? Easy problem to do. Well, let's go into the next kind of idea that we're going to have to deal with, and that comes with making triangles. <clears throat> so... Uh, these three things that we wrote down are going to be what the next concept uh, is about. And that is how can you make a triangle? You need three sides for a triangle and the two smaller sides of a triangle always have to add to be greater than the third side. Let me show you what I mean. If I had a triangle and I had a piece that was two inches long, and I had something that was just a little bit longer. It was three inches long. And I had another side that was seven inches long. And I put them end to end and end to end. If you kept trying to put these things together, two and three add up to be five. It's not long enough to make a triangle and have it end to end. It would be impossible to create a triangle end to end without sliding this thing over and then shortening one other side. So what we can learn from that is the sum of the two smaller sides has to be greater than the third side to make a triangle. Two 
plus 3 is not greater than 7. If it was, you'd be able to make a triangle, but since uh, you cannot, you cannot make a triangle from that. And so that's what we're going to do with some of our problems. With some of our problems, we're going to find out, can we make a triangle from that? I want to say my next example is number 12, which it is. We're going to do that for number 12, but number 12, we have to make sure we are using the same units or units of measurement. Can it equal, uh, it, if it was equal, let's say that this was uh, 4 and this was 3 and you brought them together, then what you would have is 4, 3 is the same length as 7. You still don't have a peak for the triangle. It would be uh, considered flat. No, it does not work. It has to be greater than to make a peak. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to test you out on that. And let's use number 12 as our example. It says, which group of side lengths can be used to construct a triangle? But what they do to try to confuse you is they use 3 yards, 4 feet, and 5 yards. The good thing is, is that we have a couple of football players in here who know how long or how many feet are in a yard. I'm sure we know. How many feet are in a yard? Three. Oh, we are not even football players. I like it. Three. So three yards is how many feet? Three yards is how many feet? Nine feet. So I like that. Four feet is still four feet. And five yards is how many feet is that? Wonderful. I would do this first. Before I started the problem, I would make sure you're in the same units. Number 12 is a tricky question because they have different units of measurement. Let's keep them in the same. I'm going to make the smaller ones. Uh, everything into the smaller one. It's a lot easier that way. And then these are not uh, in order. But do you know what your two smaller ones are? Four, nine. Okay. Does nine plus four, is that greater, question mark, than 15? Can you make a triangle out of nine plus four? Is that greater than the third side? If you cannot, then can you make a triangle from it? Your answer should be, no, I can't use that one. It's not uh, possible. You are always going to add your two smaller ones together to see if it's bigger or greater than your third side. Let's try the next one. Three yards. Five feet, eight feet. It's probably easier to switch these three yards into feet. How many feet is that? And then we have five feet and we have eight feet. Now, normally, it's the two smaller have to add up to be greater than the, the larger side. So we're going to try that and see if it works. Is it greater than the third side? Does it work? 13 feet is greater than 9 feet. This one I can make a triangle out of for <coughs> sure. But I should probably check to see if I can do these other ones. Might as well. Inches, inches, inches. What about 11 plus 16 is that greater than 27 what if it's equal to it well it's still not greater therefore you cannot make a triangle out of it and part d two feet 12 inches 12 inches how many inches is two feet two feet is what 24 inches 11 inches and 12 inches. Remember, you're picking the two smaller. Here are the two smaller. Let's do the 11 plus 12. Is it greater than 24? That's 23. Is that greater than 24? And it is not. 
Your answer for number 12 should be B. So that is uh, this inequality theorem. It's the sum of the two smaller sides has to be greater than the third side. That's what we just did. You'll be doing that on some other problems as well. The second to last idea that we have is what happens if you're given two sides? What are the possible lengths for the third side? If you're ever asked to find the range of possible lengths for the third side of a triangle, then it's really simple. It will be between the difference of the two numbers and between that and their sum of the same two numbers. All you have to do is subtract the two numbers, take the absolute value of that, and put x's in between uh, the sum. And you use a less than and a less than symbol. That means x is in between these values. Let's try that. This is number 17. It's on your worksheet. It says, describe the possible lengths of the third side of the triangle given the lengths of the other two sides. One thing you'll notice about 17, different units. We got to convert these things first. Well, if this is two feet, how many inches is that? Okay, so we have 24 inches and 40 inches. Those are our two values. And they're asking for, well, what could you make? What could the values be between? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up to this formula and we're going to subtract them, put X in between a less than, a less than, and then the sum. That's what we're going to do with these numbers. We're going to do a subtraction. I would do 40 minus 24 is less than X is less than 40 plus 24. <coughs> Forty take away twenty-four inches is sixteen inches. Is less than forty plus twenty-four is sixty-four inches, and this is what your answer is. I want to prove it to you. If I don't pick a value that is less than sixty-four. It won't work. If I put 64 here, these two will not add up to be greater than that 64. It doesn't work. It has to be, these values have to be less than 64 for this to work. Or if I go to the other end of this thing, I have to pick a value that is bigger than the 16. If I don't pick 17 or like, well, 16.1 or higher, then what happens is, is this plus this will not be greater than that. That would be 30, oh, 41. 41 is greater than 40. I can do that. But if I did 15, it wouldn't work. So their difference, their sum, the x is the values in between these two things. It cannot be equal to it. So that's our, that's our uh, third idea. And the fourth idea, the very last idea is when we compare angles and side lengths in two triangles. This is the hardest one for a lot of students to understand. But basically, when you're comparing the smallest angles in two different triangles, look for a shared side to figure out which one is the smallest in both. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to find the, all the angles in both triangles, and then we're going to see what's across from it, and then we're going to compare using a shared side. I've picked an example for you. I picked number 19. Number 19, we have a 30 degree angle, we have a 40 degree angle, we have a 90 degree angle. And it says which segment is the shortest in each diagram? So what we're going to do is we have to figure out is this the shortest, is this the shortest, is this the shortest, is this the shortest, is this the shortest? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to figure out all the angles first. 90. 40. 90 plus 40 is 130. I'm going to subtract that from 180. And I know that this angle S has to be 50 degrees. My computer is doing some funny things with this pin. But it'll come back like it just shows up again. And then I know that there is 180. Subtract 30. 
is 150. And since this is isosceles, these two angles have to be the same as each other. And so I can split this 150 into 75 and 75. So I find all the angles first. And now what I can do is I can look for the smallest angle. And I see a smallest angle here, and I see a smallest angle there. There's a triangle on the left, and there's a triangle on the right. Now some of you might think, oh, 30 is smaller than 40. Well, you have to make a comparison with the shared side. So here's what we do. I'm going to use a highlighter for this. Since this 30 is the smallest angle, across from it is this side. This QR is the smallest side in the left triangle. Now when I look at the right triangle, I see that I have a 40 degree angle and what's across from it is RS. This is the smallest side in the right triangle. But QR is in both triangles. QR is the smallest in the left. It's actually the middle one in the right. But because it's in the middle one in the right, I know that this RS has to be smaller than QR. Which is why my final answer would be that segment RS is the shortest in the diagram. Because RS is the smallest one when I compare that shared side. I hope that makes sense to you. We're going to stop your notes right there.